Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to the June channel update. This is the video where we talk about kind of the state of the channel, what's gone on for the past month, things have played, what's coming up in the next month or so, and just an update on life and the channel in general. Lots of topics for us today. We'll do first a general update. And if one of the things here, there wasn't an update in May, which actually is part of the update, just a life in general update and how things look going forward. So we'll talk about that. Shelf of shame challenge update as well. The news is somewhat dire, but let's not give up yet. And let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll talk about that when we get there. I'll talk about what I've been playing over the past couple months. Um, what new things have arrived in the house. We'll talk about that as well. A Patreon update. And then special topic for today, your first war game. I kind of mentioned what mine was, and that was part of the entry into the contest, one of the drawings for this month. And a bunch of people had some fascinating answers. So I want to spend a little bit of time talking about that as we go forward. Then as we get to the end of the video, oh, we have a, a special giveaway today. Herman Lutman, the famous designer, has graciously donated a copy, a signed copy of the Plum Island Horror. So if you want to know how to enter into the contest for that drawing, details are at the end of the video. Be sure to check that out. And we'll be giving away the $50 gift certificate to Noble Knight Games. We'll be doing that drawing at the end of this video for everybody that entered into the upcoming Wargamings one. Noble Knight Games is a sponsor of the channel. And today they just started a massive two-for-one sale. So buy two games and get one free. If you haven't checked it out yet, links are down below. They have war games, board games, new and used, all kinds of gaming supplies, miniatures, and all that kind of stuff. They ship internationally as well. Uh, they've been a channel sponsor now for about six months. I've been extraordinarily happy with all their service for my own personal orders over the past two, three years and stuff. So I'm glad that they're a channel sponsor. And by all means, if you're looking for something new, this would be a good time to check it out with their two for one sale. If you do use one of the links down below, it does help out the channel a small bit. And thank you to everybody who has, uh, has been doing that. So, with all those things being said, let's jump in and get started. Let's start out with our general channel update. So this is the segment where we just talk about like, how's the channel been doing and how is energy for the channel been going and things like that. April and May, let's be frank, were brutal. I'll talk about that in a moment, but the number of videos produced in May was three. That's the lowest month I've had since I started creating Wargaming videos about three years ago. April wasn't much better, it was five. Usually I have anywhere from 10 to 15 videos a month focused on Wargaming, so it was a fraction of the output of the months before that. Um, the reason real life, that pesky little thing called real life, invaded with a furor in April and May. In general, my work schedule gets really busy in May. Um, I shifted roles last fall to a brand new role with our organization. And it was the combination of the shift in the role, uh, some big projects that came in addition to the kind of this end of our season push, if you would, that just led to real work surging to a level that I've never had it happen before. So it's like working till like 11 o'clock on weekdays and then working on weekends and stuff like that. It didn't leave time for gaming. And one of the reasons why I actually like my job is because it's generally very, very balanced. This is the most it's been out of balance uh, probably for a decade or so. So this is, I think, a very rare circumstance. And I've kind of worked to restructure things there that I think are going to make it be uh, more even keel going forward. So I'm really optimistic that in general, this was a good thing to go through because it kind of forced to fix some some situations there that I think are really going to be uh, in much better condition going forward. So long story short, April and May were pretty brutal. Numbers are down on the channel because if you don't put videos, people don't watch them. So that's to be expected. Um, but I'm excited about going forward. June already has had, I think, six videos up looking like there'll be like 10 to 12 videos out for June. I've got time. I've got energy and I couldn't be more excited to be back. One of the, the nice benefits of kind of being forced to be away from both board gaming in general and having the time to create videos is that it kind of gave a little bit of a, a break to it as well. And one of the realizations there is how much I enjoy it. So when you can't do it at all, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm just really looking forward to getting back and playing games and creating videos and things like that. So it feels good to be back now and it looking forward, uh, going forward, it's looking like it's going to be pretty steady as she goes, which is kind of the normal state of existence for me. So thank you to everybody who's been patient over the past month with the, the lower output, but I am excited for what's coming up and for things going forward too. So it feels good to be back. Alrighty, so it's time for a super geeky update to the Shelf of Shame Challenge. 
This is a little bit embarrassing. It's been two months and nothing's moved. If you're not familiar with the Shelf of Shame Challenge update is, um, I had planned to play 10 games, one game a month over the the, 11, the last 11 months in 2024. Got off to a roaring start with the most fearful sacrifice played and then Pax Premier, as you can see just by my head over here, they're marked blue, yes. The goal for, what was it, April was to play Enemy Action Arden. But yeah, that that with the whole life spiraling out of control, uh, not much happened there. So the question beget is, is what's going to go for it? I'm determined to play as many of these as I can. I do want to start moving forward, but I think I'm going to switch to Undaunted Normandy because it's halfway through June now and I haven't started anything. And Undaunted Normandy, as I look at this list, is the easiest game to learn and play out of all the games that are here. So I think my goal for the rest of June is to get Undaunted Normandy to the table and play that one. And then we'll come back and readjust for July. I'm hoping I can make up ground with Enemy Action or Den, and then probably RAF in August. But yeah, how's your Shelf of Shame challenge going? Is it going better than mine? We can't give up on this. We've got to do this, right? We, we've got to make it go forward. So shifting from things that I've not done, let's shift to this segment of the, the channel update, which what I've been playing over the past couple months. Now, uh, even though life was really busy and I thought, wow, I really haven't played much, there's actually a enough to talk about in here so it wasn't all dire no gaming news i'm kind of covering it up into two categories the first category is right after i published the last channel update i got a chance to travel to washington dc for the circle dc conference which is the conference put on by fort circle games about 150 people or so uh, playing games for about two three days in washington dc incredible fantastic experience i want to talk about some of the games i got the chance to play there Prototype of Lenin's Legacy with Nathan from Legendary Tactics. This is a GMT game on P500 right now. I'm going to have an interview with Matthias Kramer, the designer of that game, coming up on the channel um, at some point in the next month or so. Really fun experience. I think I was Stalin and against Trotsky, and I was a terrible Stalin. Trotsky and Nathan kicked my butt. But it's a really fun, subtle kind of intrigue card-based game with a lot of different mechanics and movement on it. So that was really fun to play. Um, Liz Davidson and David Liz Davidson has in, from Beyond Solitaire has introduced me to the game Obsession. It's not a historical game, but it's still really fun. Got a chance to play a game with Liz and then David Thompson and one other person there. Um, I got my butt kicked in this game too, but it was really fun to play Obsession live uh, with them. That was a great time. Steel Platoons is another game I got a chance to play a fully game functional prototype with. This is a game from Mark, Mark Rodrique. There's an interview on the channel now with him about this game that will eventually, sometime probably 2026, be published from Nuts Publishing. So it's got a long timeline coming out, maybe optimistically the end of 2025. Really fun to play this kind of tactical tank versus tank combat game at kind of a medium level of complexity. Two games from Wes Crawford. One was Engine Thieves. This is a game where you steal a train in the Civil War solitaire game. So it's got trains and combat and Civil War history. Really cool game based on a real event. Um, there's going to be an interview coming up on the channel about that game in the next month or so. That was really fun. And another game from Wes Crawford, The Hunt for J.W. Booth, where you're hunting down Booth after he's assassinated Lincoln and you're trying to chase him down in Washington, D.C. and figure out where he went. So kind of mystery sleuthing, historical gaming kind of element to that one as well. Guest of Robin Hood. This is the first game I played at the conference. Two-player, very much coinish type game. If you've hesitated away from playing coin games, and to, to, to kind of context, coin games are GMT's games called counterinsurgency games, usually four-player games set in some sort of historical context where you're trying to influence governments and topple governments and things like that. Um, and there's insurgency and counterinsurgency and military troops and government troops and all kinds of fun things in this series of coin games. Uh, Guest of Robin Hood is very much like a, it's a coin-based kind of coin-based game where one person plays Robin Hood and one person plays the Sheriff of Nottingham. So you immediately get the theme. It's two-player, incredible accessible, a lot of fun, brilliantly balanced and designed, I think. So this game is going to be, I think we're going to see a lot of people playing this one. Really fun to get some action in with that one. That was a fun game. Got a chance to visit the Udvar Hazy uh, Center out with the Smithsonian. Incredible to see the Blackbird space shuttle in Yola Gay, flak bait the B-17 bomber. That was really fun. So a group of us went out and saw that for a half day while we were there. And then another prototype dimension, this game called Open Windows, which was designed in the conference by one of the people there. They designed it overnight. And it had like a hubbub of activity around it. You play Putin or kind of U.S. trying to infiltrate Putin's regime. And Putin is throwing people out windows for people he doesn't trust. And you have no idea who's a, a spot. Well, 
you can try to figure out you're trying as Putin, you're trying to figure out who the spies are, who the moles are and stuff like that. As the US, you're kind of kind of trying to get your moles in there. Really fun game. I hope it becomes a reality. But to sum up all this, and I'm probably missing like another half dozen things I played. That's kind of the ones I could think off the top of my head here. Really fun conference. If you're looking for a good historical gaming, war gaming conference that you want to attend. And just there's also an element of board gaming in general going on at this one too. At this one too. Can't recommend this one more highly. It's incredibly fun. You should come next year when they do it. Hopefully they do it again next year, uh, but you should definitely come. It's, it was a great event, and I, I you know, thank you very much for Fort Circle Games for, for putting it together and having us all there. That was just an incredible experience. Can't recommend it more highly. And then after I came back from Fort Circle Games, Circle DC, hit that really busy stretch of work. It was kind of crazy, but I was actually looking over things. I did get in some games, which was surprising. I always, always have like a game or two a month I play of the Shores of Tripoli. So I had a couple of those going. And then, um, so this, I, I, I play, I've been playing Obsession, I'm going to on Board Game Arena, and it just on a whim, I shouldn't have done this, right? Because it's a really busy time. I signed up for an Obsession tournament on there. I'd never played in a board gaming tournament before, so I signed up to play Obsession in this tournament. I thought it'd be like one game a day. It was 15 games that launched at the same time in this incredibly busy time at work. I was like, whoa, this is way too much stress and (laughs) thought that I thought I was going to have to give this. But I didn't want, you get a bad rating if you like quit a game. And so I didn't want to be that person in the tournament that doesn't play their games. So I'm like, okay, no, I just have to carve out time and figure out how to play these, these 14 or 15 games whatsoever in the first round. And I thought I'll play the first round and then I'll get knocked out. Well, there's like the top two player in each of the 15 player brackets goes on to the final round. I finished second place in that first bracket. So I was like, oh, really? I, was, I kind of wanted to lose so I didn't have to play the final bracket because I'm not a good player, right? But whatever reason, I was just good enough to get second place in that bracket to go over to the final group where I got absolutely trounced. It's the best players in the world. I think I was 12th out of the 14 in the final group there. So I got my butt kicked in the final round but it was really fun to play it just was a rough timing for it with work being so busy trying to find time to carve a way to make moves asynchronously in this tournament that was a great experience i've been playing a lot on board game arena uh, with that and really liking that game Uh, pax premiere played that a little bit it always seems like there's a game or two a month of that going on non-historical based games wingspan i got a couple 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 games going on um, of wingspan and then wormspan we played with our word work board gaming group I really like the gameplay of Wormspan. I think I like it more than Wingspan. Um, I, I love both games, but I'm really intrigued. We're going to play Wormspan again this weekend with the our work board gaming group too. I uh, got in a quick starter kind of learning scenario of War of the Ring with solo pub battles. So we played that for a couple hours on a rare day where I had some time on the weekend too. And then that's what happened in that busy stretch. So two months, there wasn't a lot of gaming in there. But now since I've been back, what's on my table right now um, is a review copy of 85 Afghanistan Graveyard of Empires. I've played a full scenario with that. I'm playing the second scenario now. I'm going to try to make a video on gameplay for that. We'll talk about that with things coming up on the channel. Um, That's been really fun to kind of dig in and learn this kind of medium level complexity. Not even that, maybe kind of light to medium level. Yeah, medium level complexity is probably the right way to put it. Tactical warfare. Uh, This game course set uh, Soviets against Afghani Mujahideen in Afghanistan in 1985. There you go. So the next one, it'll hopefully be a month from now. Won't be as long a list and things like that. But yeah, I was kind of surprised at how many things I got a chance to get in and play over the past two months, despite it being uh, incredibly ridiculously busy. That is a time, I think, when those asynchronous services like Rally the Troops, uh, Board Game Arena, where you can just jump in for five minutes, 10 minutes, and make a couple moves and games and jump back out. I really like asynchronous gaming. It's a different way to play games than live in person with people. But when you're really busy, it's a nice way to get just in kind of like keep that lifeline going with board games. So I'm really happy with Rally the Troops, Board Game Arena, some of the games on Steam and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I got in a game of Twilight Struggle. I played a player who was really good and got my butt kicked in that. It's like the first time I've played someone I think who's really good at the game and it showed. It's like everything is like, oh, he anticipated that. <laughs> and so it was not, I don't think I scored, a. I think maybe I scored two points. I lost in like the third round or something. That, the, the, the middle portion of the game there for people that know the game. Anyway, there we have it. Things played over the past couple months. Let's shift now to things that are new and in the house. These are games that have arrived in the past two and a half months. There's a pretty hefty collection of here. I might be missing a couple, but this should be most of them. Get ready, drum roll. As we start off, first up came in was uh, Burning Banners from Compass Games. Uh, I've done a, a first look video of this one and I'm scheduled to play it 
a week from this weekend. So in about 10 days, hoping to get in the first scenario with uh, solo pub battles from this one. Fantasy War Game looks so cool. I'm just really excited to play that one. Uh, another one from Compass Games. I ordered Atlantic Sentinels. This one I kind of, kind of got on a whim. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to play it. It's still in a shrink wrap. Um, as I, I've mentioned before, I have a rule that I don't open the shrink wrap until I do the first look video and start digging into the game. Um, this one is the flip side of kind of the hunters and the hunted and silent victory where you're playing in that same kind of solitaire model except you're playing the people trying to sink the submarine so i'm kind of curious to see how that one goes i love those the hunters and silent victory type games so i'm curious to see how this one plays out with that model applied to the other side of the equation there pull position from do it games this is a game we did a, an interview on a long time ago it's gone through its kickstarter and got released they sent me a copy and um, and people may have seen it in one of the other videos. There's a Zilla Blitz Pit Stop, which is so such a cool thing. So I'm really excited to get this one to the table now that I've got time to play games again, too. Next one I messed up. I ordered this from GMT Games for the people. I really wanted this one for the box. I know it's a classic game, Mark Herman's game of the, the Civil War. And I thought this would be good to pick up now that it has this kind of deluxe rendition box. But look what I did. I'm such a dummy. I didn't, I, no, I didn't order two of them. But they have one version that's just the box and the mounted map. I think that's if you have the other version of the game and just wanted the mounted map. But this game comes with the mounted map and the the big box. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It's kind of, I, maybe I'll have two maps, but I'm not sure quite. Yeah, I'm kind of an idiot like that sometimes. But anyway, for the people, Civil War game, looking forward to that one, strategic level game. A review copy of Mag 23. Now this is the, I'm going to show this one on the channel. This is from Historic Wings. They have the book games that they sell on Amazon and they're print and play, right? So. The book is this piece right here, um, and usually have to print out your own components, but now they have an arrangement with Blue Panther Games where you can buy the counters and the maps and all the player aids, and they come in a box. So you have to get the book and the box, but they've sent along a copy of Mag 23, which is the one about Guadalcanal. This will be coming to the channel somewhat soon in terms of some gameplay and kind of taking a review look at this. So I'm excited to dig into this one. I've looked at Tally Ho before, but it was the print and play version. And my print and play skills are pretty rudimentary to it usually doesn't happen. So I'm kind of excited that I don't have to print out the pieces and get a chance to play this one. So looking forward to that. Not done yet. Operation Barclay. There's a video up about this on the channel. This is a prototype about the deception around Operation Husky in World War II. Two-player card-based game. War-themed with kind of poker-esque type of card play. A lot going on here. It's a really clever two-player game with some subtle thinking tactics required to win. So I've enjoyed playing this one. That's when I should have mentioned that I played because I played it. So oops, forgot that. It should have been in the other part of the video too. Uh, Invasion Malta arrived from Legion War Games. I just did a, a first look video of this one. Um, I'd say a, a moderate to high level complexity look at Invasion Malta and it includes Invasion Leros in it. There is a first look video up on the channel about this one. If you're looking for a in-depth look at landings in World War II because it's got air, sea, all, land, everything in here, is it's a really in-depth look at Invasion Malta. Very cool. Two games in from um, VUCA Sims, Traces of Hubris. There's a first look video up on the channel for this one now too. Uh, and I hope to get some gameplay up for this one soon. This is um, Traces of War's brother game, I guess it would be using a similar but not identical system. So I think a very accessible World War II uh, war game on the Eastern Front by Tetsuya Nakamura. I'm looking forward. I've learned that one. I'm learning as soon as my table's cleared. I hope to get this one to the, the table and be able to play some of it. And then also from VUCA Sims, I've just started to explore this one now, is Brian Asklev's 1812 about Napoleon's fateful march to Moscow, where basically everybody died. So this is a two-player, lots of hidden deception, kind of hidden elements to this and blocks and cards and things like that, that uh, it's not a solitaire game by any means, but it looks like it's gonna be a really fun two player game. So I've just started to learn this one now. And there's one last batch of things in the house to talk about uh, related to a potentially upcoming project. So the second game I played coming back to Wargaming was Sherman Leader. And I've got, I think three or four of the leader games now, but I was thinking about, would it be cool to answer the question like, what's my favorite leader game in that leader category games from Denver and games, right? And I only need, I was missing like three or four of them. So I thought, well, let's see what Noble Knight Games has. So I was able to use some of the store credit from people that have used the links to buy games from Noble Knight Games to pick up some of the leader games and try to fill out that collection a little bit. So when they had their big sale, like a month and a half ago, um, I added to that collection with Corsair Leader. So that one's in the house, be able to look at that one. And then, 
Phantom Leader to be able to look at that one. And then lastly, the third and final game here, um, Apache Thunderbolt Apache Leader. So this pretty much fills out that leader connection, which makes me think it might be time to start digging into that uh, that long term project of exploring the leader games and which one's the lead, which one's my favorite leader game. Now, again, I don't know when that's going to happen. I've got to get caught up on a few projects first, but it's kind of a long term thing. So thank you to everybody who has uh, ordered stuff through those links for Noble Knight because that's what that went to down below. Whew, that was that's a lot of stuff. That's like two and a half months worth of stuff to be here. So it's not a, this is a, a intended monthly update, but that was two and a half months worth of stuff in there. So I'm excited to play a lot of these. I've already started in on a few of them too. Um, oh, oh, there's one more too that I wanted to mention. I forgot. Um, 85 Afghanistan Graveyard of Empires. Uh, is in the house and it's actually on the table. That's why I'm, I'm not showing. I could get the box, but uh, anyway, it's there and on the table. That's in from Flying Pig Games and that's the one I'm exploring right now. So we'll talk about that one a little bit more in the next segment. A regular part of the channel updates is to express gratitude towards the Patreon supporters of the channel and this is no exception. This one in particular, uh, I'm very grateful for people that have been patient with me over the past couple of months, which have been so busy because I know the idea behind Patreon is support channels to help people make content. And then over the past couple of months, there really hasn't been much content to show for that support. So um, I apologize again for that that rough two months. And I'm very grateful for the, the Patreon members that have stuck with me over the past couple months as uh, it's been a busy, busy time. I'd like to also thank the new Patreon members, DM Tim, uh, then Thomas Mink, Donald Novar and Eric Neff all joining in the past time span there. Thank you so much for your support and welcome aboard. A couple of related announcements to that. I'm very excited to say that I have been eyeing this improvement. So this is a Yeti microphone right now. It's a very good mid-level microphone. Um, if you're kind of starting out, it definitely improves the sound and stuff like that. But one thing that I've been eyeing for the longest time is this baby. It's a Shure uh, SM7B microphone. It's kind of the industry standard for voice in terms of these types of settings and, and, and blogging and stuff like that and creating YouTube videos. It's, it was an expensive microphone. I've been looking at it for the longest time. And finally, it was like, OK, there's enough money in the uh, Patreon account. So I was able to get that. So this will be the last episode probably with this beloved Yeti, which is served well. But I'm looking forward to the sound upgrade with the Shure microphone. So thank you. That's what the Patreon fund was going to. The other thing I mentioned in the last update was potentially creating a Discord for Patreon. I'm going to do that. That'll probably happen the end in about a month. So I've got it scheduled up. There's a little bit of travel I've got in July, and I don't want to start it and then be gone for like five or six days and not be able to respond to people. So I'm going to wait until I get back from that, and then I'm going to start the Discord channel for uh, Patreon supporters. So I'm looking forward to that. That should be fun too. Again, because Patreon is not really a platform that I think people check for communication. So it's hard to kind of have conversation there. And I think just so many people are on Discord that I want to be able to do that with Patreon members too. So that'll be coming up at the end of July. Should be in place probably around the next time of this update or so. So a quick reprieve from talking about channel update stuff to talk about what came up in the last upcoming Wargaming's video. I mentioned that my first war game that I ever played was Midway. It was a gift from my brother um, and we and I played it till it kind of fell apart. And so the question to enter the, the drawing for this month was, what was your first war game? I was absolutely flabbergasted by the responses. There were some themes that I want to talk about that I think are kind of interesting. First up, I was amazed how many people had first wargaming experiences that were Avalon Hill games from like the 1960s and 1970s. There's so many people that posted things like D-Day, Gettysburg, and stuff like that. I thought the, I thought the spread would be wider, but it's amazing how many of us kind of cut our teeth on Avalon Hill games and not so many people mentioning SPI games as their first game. I guess that would probably make sense because I kind of I think that's the way I went. Like you find Avalon Hill first and maybe they had a wider footprint in stores and stuff like that. And then it kind of went where if you like that, you would find SPI and move into them as kind of your second level of wargaming uh, kind of development, if you would. And within that, what I thought was also interesting, I, I, I don't have the actual numbers on it, but my general sense for the number one game that people mentioned the most was Avalon Hills Tactics 2 as being the one that most people started with. So many people mentioned that as their first game. I would not have expected that at the beginning of this. I would have thought it went much broader with a good number of people mentioning Avalon Hills games, but with a much greater disposition across that. A lot of people mentioning D-Day, uh, Blitzkrieg was in there. Some people, other people mentioning Midway. 
um, Luftwaffe. A lot of those Avalon Hill bookcase games, a lot of Panzer Leader and Panzer Blitzes were in there too. Um, so those are really interesting to see. And then some people with new ones. The other one I think had a lot of entries was Axis and Allies, which makes sense. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's an easy, accessible game that's got wide distribution. So I think a lot of people found that and then saying, yes, I went from that to the next level and next game, something more complex and things like that. A lot of people, interestingly too, um, and so that's just a kind of a brief aside within this conversation, mentioning, apologizing, saying, I'm not really sure if something like Risk is a war game, or I'm not really sure if Axis and Allies is a war game, or if you count that as a war game. Just to be sure, there is the whole what is a war game debate, conversation, argument, kind of grouping chaos that's out there. I'm, I, and it's a fascinating conversation for people that find it fascinating. It's, I don't really care. <laughs> and I, that might sound like callous or something like that. I just, whatever you think is a war game is fine by me. I have very loose interpretation of what a war game is. So you don't have to apologize if you want to say risk is your first war game. That's all cool and well. It's a game. It's about war. Okay, that works for me. So uh, no judgment here. It's all good. It's all one big happy family. Let's make war gaming and historical gaming as big as we possibly can and have a good time with it. So yeah, for all the people that felt like they had to apologize for risk or access and allies, it's all good. You're welcome to the party here. This is for everybody. So uh, yeah, come on in and don't worry about things like that. Uh, and a bunch of people did have risk down there. And I remember too, that actually was probably before Midway for me. We had some amazing family battles with risk. Risk. I particularly liked it too when they had the expanded kind of revised rules that came out much later and they kind of balanced out some of the card deck play and the sets play and stuff like that. A lot of cool options that made it less swingy based on who got the killer set of cards and had 700 armies to wipe out everybody on the, on the map and stuff. But I want to also talk for a moment too about some of the eye-opening entries because there's one entry in particular that I think deserves almost like a congressional medal of honor. So about five or six people mentioned Avalon Hill's Rise and Fall of the Third Reich as their first game, okay? I'm like, really? That's such a complex game. How would you survive that as your first war game? That's amazing. So kudos to everybody that started with that. And I'd put in the same category, a lot of people mentioned they started with squad leader or advanced squad leader. And I assume in the cases like that, they're probably getting taught or helped into the game by other people. But still, that's just such a crazy, amazing start with wargaming to start with something that complex. But here is the ultimate winner of this blew my mind for first, for first war games, okay? Zooks 1962 said this, great information, thanks. First war game I played was World in Flames, third edition. Yes, I dove into the deep end right off the bat. <laughs> you think? So if you don't know World in Flames, it's a monster game with thousands of pieces that takes hours and hours to play. It's on my bucket list to make a video about War and Flames and play through the whole thing. I don't know when I'll ever get to it. I'm going to have to retire first. But as your first war game, World in Flames, you, that's like Congressional Medal of Honor stuff. That was just so, I couldn't stop laughing and thinking about that for the whole day. It's like, imagine that for your very first war game and you open it up and they're just thousands of pieces. So kudos to Zooks1962 who started off in our hobby with the absolutely most audacious first game I can think of, World of Flames, World in Flames third edition. Congratulations. So yeah, thank you to everybody who posted on that. We're going to draw very soon to pick the winner of this too. Lots of entries. Sorry for it took me a while to reply to them. It, there were there are a lot of entries, so it took me a while to reply to people's uh, comments and things like that. But fun conversation. If you have other thoughts on your first war game and things like that, I'd be curious to hear them and things. So it was really fun for me to read people's comments. And before we do our drawings, before we go to our final segment for our drawings, I just want to kind of talk a little bit about what's coming up on the channel in the next month or so. Um, there's a laundry list of things to play through and create videos for. So this is in no particular order, but things that are coming up on the channel sometime in the next couple months, there's a, a kind of a backlog of things to play through. Uh, what from the on the PC side, the Wargame Design Studio Panzer Battles of North Africa. I want to play a scenario and bring that to the channel. By the way, Wargame Design Studio is having a 20% off sale on orders more than $200. They very rarely have sales across their catalog. So if you like their systems, this would be a good time to check them out. I'll put a link down below to that. Um, we are coming Nineveh from Nuts Publishing. It's been on my learning table for a while. It got stuck in that segment of not being able to play games. But that should be coming to the channel in terms of a playthrough of that. 
1812, um, I'm going to show that one. Gameplay will come. I'm not quite sure when, but I'm going to get a first look up on that one. Uh, Orange Shell Overcome. That will be coming up to the channel. Mag 23. 85 Great Year of it. Empires will be one of the sooner than later ones. Eighth Air Force was the winner of the vote from Fortress Games. So there'll be a playthrough of that. Onus Trianus coming up. And those are kind of the, the near run future look at what's coming to the channel in terms of gameplay stuff. Um, some interviews coming up on the channel, a couple with uh, Vocal Runke, Wes Crawford, as I mentioned earlier on, and Matthias Kramer has done one. Uh, more of those coming as we go forward too. And then other stuff as it kind of unfolds. So a lot of stuff in the list of games, kind of looking at it now in the list of games to play and create videos for to hopefully uh, look forward to in the, in the upcoming month here of June and then into July as we get into the summer. And so now let's shift to the last couple things where we give things away on the channel. We've got two things to do. The first up is to give uh, a kind of guidance on how you can enter into the giveaway for the Herman Lutman designed copy of the Plum Island Horror. So thank you again to Herman for donating this to the channel and for us to be able to give away. There is a link to a Google survey down below that has a, some, some really easy questions about some of the games that Herman has designed. So to enter into the contest, and I should say, Apologies up front. This is only a contest for lower 48 United States, United States. So sorry for our international viewers, um, but it's restricted to the lower 48 continental United States. Um, and for that one, there's going to be a kind of a web hunt about Herman Lutman's games. There's few, just a few really simple questions. I do need to collect emails to check for duplicate, entry, duplicate entries. But as always, once a contest is over, I dispose of those. I have no interest in collecting your emails. And then in the next channel update, or a couple of weeks actually, probably I'll come through and uh, we'll pick the winner for that. Probably in upcoming war games, I'll pick the winner for that. So in about a week or two. So don't delay. It'll take you probably five, 10 minutes to figure out the answers and enter into the contest. Thank you again for Herman to uh, for donating that game and good luck to everybody and your chances to win that signed copy of the game. All right. And now the moment where we actually give something away, we're going to pick our drawing, our winner from the entries in the upcoming upcoming war games comment section to enter this contest you had to post your first war game that you ever played and then hashtag noble knight to be entered into this $50 drawing gift store credit drawing for noble knight games i'm going to press the start button and we will see who our winner is good luck to our nearly 200 entries in this contest do, 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 do. thomas holly 7176 Pulling Thomas's comment from the list of comments here. I love these upcoming war game videos. Keep them coming. Hashtag Noble Knight. The first war game I played was Panzer Blitz from Avalon Hill. So many Avalon Hill starters. I still have it in my collection. Congratulations to Thomas and thank you everybody for entering into this contest. Thomas, if you could post a comment down below saying that you saw this and then I'll follow up with a reply on how we can connect and get you that store credit. And with that, it brings us to the end of this channel update, a rather lengthy one. We had a lot of ground to cover because two and a half months since doing one of these. So um, if you are looking for something else to watch on the channel, I might guide you to our replay of A Most Fearful Sacrifice. There's a three video series uh, about a scenario from that game uh, that was posted in March. If you haven't seen, yet, seen that yet, you might enjoy watching that one. See you soon on more videos on the channel. Thank you so much, as always, for all your support and help and guidance and community over this adventure. Um, it's been such a pleasure over the past three years, and I'm looking forward to year number four. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.